just three weeks, what a total contrast. Yeah, it's great to win uh, the last three games, obviously. The, the spirit, uh, the energy around the place and the vibe is, is always better. I feel better myself. <laughs> um, and on, the, on this uh, Christmas period, to win three games in a row is, is never easy in this league. And um, we've done it, and now hopefully we can pick a, a much better run. FA Cup tomorrow, you're the holders. Do you look back on that day in August with fond memories of winning it in your first season? Well, it was a, a beautiful day. Um, it's the last game of the season. Everybody take off after that. Um, it was a, a really difficult end of the year with all the COVID uh, situation that we have in place. And obviously it was a, a great day to finish the season in the high. Do you think, do you often amazed at how Arsenal Wenger really managed to win it seven times? It's such a, a you know, are you going to go after this competition again because it's yours? Absolutely. We're going to go after every competition um, and we are the holders. We have to defend uh, that title. Uh, we know how it means uh, for the football club and uh, the history that is related uh, to the FA Cup. So it's a great competition to play for us. Can I ask you about Meza Ozil? Um, What's his future? What's going to happen this month with him? Will he be leaving? I don't know what it's uh, going to happen. Obviously, now it's, it's free to, to negotiate with other clubs. Um, we will discuss internally what's the best situation for him for the near future. And obviously, with, with the player and the agent and, um, and try to find the best solution for, for everybody. If you was in his shoes, would you want to play every last game you can? You just got to keep playing. I think every player wants to play football. This is why we picked uh, this profession, and we are so lucky to be doing what we do. And for every player that is not playing, it's always hard. He could still stay, possibly. And then we will decide uh, what's happening in the next uh, few days. Okay. Thank you. Good luck in the cup. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I ask you, obviously? This, this game against Newcastle, it, there's no doubts about the game, thankfully. You've had a few problems uh, with COVID, but they all seem to be at the moment behind you. Uh, but how much of a concern is it going forward? I mean, we're, we're seeing more and more 40 uh, positive tests in the Premier League this week. How much of a concern more and more is it going forward week by week in the Premier League for clubs? Well, it is worrying because um, we see every day what is happening in the country. Um, and the level of infections and deaths is increasing. Um, and you can sense, um, not the panic, but the worrying around uh, everybody. We are suffering for all the people that is uh, involved in different and difficult circumstances at the moment. And we cannot isolate from that. Um, what we try to do is try to maintain the infection as low as possible, follow all the protocols and the doctors are doing an incredible job to try to maintain a safe environment for us. And we have to try to keep insisting, not just to our players, but all the staff and everybody involved around the place um, to be very conscious of um, how difficult is the, the situation that we are in and how lucky we are to still do what we do. Are your players and, and, and the staff around the club, all the staff, um, are they anxious? Are they, are they worried? Because while the protocols uh, mean that it's safe at Colney, it, you know, the minute they leave, anything can happen. Yeah, they are worried, but they are know that in this environment they are really well protected. Um, but obviously, this virus is touching everybody in a personal level. You always have a relative, a parent, uh, somebody, a friend that has been here with the virus in, in many different ways. So they are. We are now very educated about it, and uh, we all had a history related to it, and and then becomes more worrying, of course. You're playing Newcastle in the third round this weekend. If you get through, we then have the draw for the fourth round and the fifth round, which is a bit weird. I mean, normally you just have the fourth round draw, play that game, then have the draw for the fifth round. Um, do you think that we need to try and maintain the magic and the prestigious competition, and maybe just let's have one round draw at a time. Yeah, well, it seems like every year we're changing some rules in, in every competition, in every cup. Something has to be different. I don't know what it is. Uh, I think we are doing something good as well in the country, is that every cup is becoming more and more important. You see, for example, the Carabao Cup, the teams that were involved in semi-finals and the finals, comparing to the last eight, ten years, and, and it's improved because everybody wants to win 
a trophy. Everybody knows how difficult it is to win a trophy, so you have to stick to every competition. And that is raising the level, certainly. But as you mentioned, yeah, we can do things a little bit simpler sometimes. My last one is kind of linked to a question I always ask you about Mesut Ozil, but I'm not, it's, it's more about others. Has the emergence of Emil Smith-Rowe um, and other players, young players like Bakayo Saka, for example, and uh, Joe Willett, has they meant now that if you were even thinking about keeping Mesut Ozil after this transfer window, you don't need to anymore because these young players have, have in a way, solved the problem you had? And we need every player that is uh, involved in our squad. Um, and the fact that the youngsters are involved in the squad means that they have the level to compete with any player in that squad. And uh, the young players, they have moments through the season. You know, it's really difficult for them to be const constantly at their level for 10 months. But sometimes players develop, players have moments, and you have to take those moments. And if that means that they're pushing somebody else, I think it's a really healthy competition for the team. And the team all, all the time gets um, better when situations like that happen. So I think it's a really positive news. A lot of excitement in the Turkish media yesterday over Mezit possibly joining um, Fenerbahce. Uh, I know you said you're going to discuss it internally, but. Do you think it would be good for the club, good for him, if something was sorted this month? If something is sorted this month, it's because it's good um, for both parties. Because it's good uh, for Mesut and his future and because it's good for the club. If that's the case, um, we will move forward. If it's not the case, then uh, the play will continue here. Tell me, is he, is he training? with you there were some pictures i think was it yesterday or the day before and no one could see him uh training with you is it what's what's what's, what's going on what's he what's he well, doing at the he's moment been, he's been training with us um but he had some days um because uh, we decided to, um, to give him some days for for something personal and that's the case but he's been training with us all the time I mean, are you aware of him talking to other clubs? Because obviously he can do from January the 1st. We are aware of uh, all the conversation that we had uh, with Mesut internally and with his agent. And this communication keeps going. And, um, and of course, because from now on, he's free to talk to any club. So he's entitled to do that. Uh, tell us about Omar Rekic at Hertha Berlin. Um, there are reports that he's passed a medical to join Arsenal and that he is training with you. What, what's the situation? We will announce it uh, when we possibly can. It's a young talent that we've been following um, for a while that uh, we believe has a really bright future, but uh, we will give more details when, when we can in. OK. Are you expecting something very soon on that front then? Yes. Possibly today? <laughs> I don't know, very soon. <laughs> All right, I noticed that Thomas Partey um, is, is back in full training with you. Um, suggestion that he might be able to, to play a part this weekend. What, what, that, what would that mean to you? Um, and and, and how, how, do you, how do you rate his chances of playing against Newcastle? Well, we've got an extra two training sessions. Um, we will assess after that uh, whether he's completely full, uh, ready to start uh, or participate against Newcastle, or if we're going to leave it uh, another few days uh, for the Palace game. But um, he's been training very good. He's comfortable. He's not aware of the injury right now. He's done more than what he already did uh, before he played um, after the injury against the Spurs. So he's in a good place, in a good mood, and you can see the player he is when, when he's training. OK, listen, uh, finally from me, I noticed that you know, William Saliba uh, went on loan. Uh, he's gone to Nice, made his debut for them last night against Brest. Uh, they were beaten 2-0, weren't they? But, but how important is it for him now to be getting games? Yes. Well, we signed a big project that uh, we have some issues with because he hasn't played enough football in the last 18 months. And at that, uh, at that age and in the development phase that he's at, that is crucial. Um, 
And I was always very conscious uh, when he came back, when he didn't do the step that he had to do before joining us, that to start a relationship with a new manager, with a new club, a new teammates, where he's not having any game time is really difficult. And I think it's damaging for the future. And I want to protect the player that we signed and the future that we have alongside him. And the best way to do that is to give him minutes and play. And um, it's been really good. It's been difficult months for him to cope with that situation. But I see the development that he's made, um, the progression that he's shown over the months. And now he's ready to compete. He's going into a really strong league as well, a league that he knows really well. He has experience and he needs to play as many games as possible to be ready for us for next season. Actually playing for you next season, does that mean... You, he will come back in the summer no matter what, there won't be an extension to that loan. He will come back uh, for pre-season and, and he will be with us. Hopefully he will come back after playing a, a number of games and his performance is racing and uh, his development progressing in the right way. And um, that's why we made that decision. I know that sometimes it's difficult to explain or understand uh, after the money that, that the club has spent uh, trying to bring him in to send him on loan. But a lot of things have happened to him. He's a long-term player for us and we need to protect him as well. And uh, giving him three or four games is not enough for him. He needs much more than that because what happened in the last 18 months, he's been through some personal problems as well that, um, that we have to try to help him and stay as close as possible to him. And now he needs to play, play and play and enjoy his profession as well. And in order to do that, I think we found uh, the right club with him. He's very happy to go there right now and hopefully he can enjoy his, his football and be ready for us for next season. In terms of team selection for the weekend, Mezit's actually available because obviously in previous competitions he's not been registered. Would we expect him to be involved at all on Saturday? We'll decide uh, what we do. Um, just, just with Mesut, it, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because obviously you've got so much attention about a player that's not playing and it, you just need to almost, the decision has to be made one way or another really soon, doesn't it? Just what's going to happen with him? Yeah, the decision has to be made when you have to register or not register players, when you have to play them or not play them all the time. And we know that uh, we have a really important player that it's... Um, that is one of the key players uh, in the past few seasons for this football club. Um, we have to make a decision. I have to make a decision. I made it. I knew the consequences of it. And um, and now we're going to have to make another one in January. And, and we will just put in the balance um, what is the best thing for the club and the best thing for the team and uh, what the intentions of the players are and try to find the right solution to that. You know, Ian mentioned to you about um, the, the rising COVID cases that we've seen across the country and things like that, and the rising Premier League issues as well. Is, have we got a problem now with the number of, of players that seem to be breaking protocols and things like that? And should there be a firmer punishment for players that do, do breach the bubbles and, and bring it into training ground? Yeah, I think we have to be very aware of that and, um, and we have to be very strict. And I think the players, like any any public person um, has to be more aware than anybody else. Um, there are a lot of people that don't respect the rules. They are out there, they don't get notices, they can get away with that. Um, we are luckier than anybody else because we are still being around the place. We can still um, uh, do our job and continue with our professions. And uh, we have to bear in mind that everything that we do has other consequences and other people act doesn't. And at the moment, uh, we cannot deliver it down. You know, we, we take in some risk to continue playing. We're trying to do the, the right things. You know, people are sacrificing their lives to help the society in this moment. And what we have to do is just contribute, 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 and don't give any more issues, either to the public, neither to the government, to make a decision that uh, we don't want. That's for sure. Thank you. Have you made that clear talking to your players if you told yeah. them? Yeah. Absolutely. And the dog is very aware and really all the time trying to push. We are getting educated now with new rules, new protocols uh, around the place. We have a lot of people and sometimes you can make a mistake, you know, but uh, there are certain things that we cannot allow to happen as well. Great. Thanks, Miguel. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Hello. 
Hi there. Just um, wondering, when you say you need every player available, does that mean you will block possible loan deals for players such as Joe Willock and Reese Nelson because you want them around at the, in the in the squad? Well, when, once we have the players in the squad, we need everybody available because then we have a larger uh, options to choose. Um, when we have to decide, is this player going to have enough game time? Is it better to keep him here or send him alone? Then it's a, a different discussion. But we need these players available to be able as well to go on law. We have already made some decisions. As you could see, there are some players that have left the, the club uh, in in different ways and the uh, and the squad was too large you know and it's really difficult to handle that situation even even in training uh so that was one of the priorities in this window and i think slowly we are doing that okay. is it still too large then still need changes yes okay and just another player is is flo balligan fit and available for saturday he is fit and available um Again, his progression and and the use of the time that he's had with us has been incredible, incredible good, and um, and he will keep having chances while he's with us. And is there any movement on his contract situation? Because he says he's going to have a big year. Do you think that will be at Arsenal? Well, you need three parties to make a deal. For sure, uh, the club wants to make a deal. The manager wants to make a deal. The player wants to stay, and I'm not sure about the agent. Okay. Is there room for him to come through at Arsenal in terms of all the attacking players you've got? Yes. And and, and just so just to pick you up on that, you're saying his agent is the one who's stopping this contract? No, I'm not saying he's stopping. It's that we need to find an agreement with him. We are negotiating at the end with an agent, with a player that wants to stay at the club, and we need to find the agreement. I'm telling you that we are doing everything we can to keep him here. And hopefully from the other part, they are doing the same and they're defending the same interest, which is the player's interest, which is to stay at the football club and be successful with us. Okay, interesting stuff. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Good luck, Moscow.